Hello, my friends. So today we have an excellent question that came from Kerry Thomas from United Kingdom, part of her LearnPowerBI.com family. So Kerry here is dealing with headcount data. Now, a lot of times, even in my demos, I show sales data and you sum up the sales and it works. But headcount is slightly different, at least the way the data is often stored. So in this case, we can see that by month, every month, we are getting the right count of the headcount. And you can see in this graph that the headcount was just increasing over month. So again, when we're looking at a month level, the count is correct. But when we're not looking at a month, it all goes to hell. So let's see. So in here, 2020, it's actually adding up. And we can see that even in the most recent month, the largest headcount we've had is 10,944. So clearly this is wrong. 22,000, it's not right. This is not right. This is not right. None of these numbers are right. And um, over here on this side, uh, by department, that is wrong as well. I mean, look at that. Engineering does not have 47,000 people. Now, again, if we select a specific month, then the numbers are right, then the department break breakdown is right. But what about when we're trying to look at it by year or by quarter, it's all wrong. All right, so that's a discussion we had with Kerry Thomas and I'm gonna show you in this video how to tackle this. Now, of course, if you're new to the channel and you're a Power BI beginner or still feel like a beginner, then my friend, this channel is for you. So make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you're notified whenever we post new videos for you and answer your Power BI questions. Again, um, huge thanks to Carrie Thomas for bringing to this to our attention. Had a great discussion with her. You can also connect with her. We're gonna put uh, 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 her LinkedIn profile URL in the description below. You can connect or follow her there. Uh, and if you have your own questions, well, then you can just go to learnpowerbi.com slash question and send us your questions. All right, so let's go back and hopefully you understand the scenario here. So let me take a step back and look at the data set, right? So if you look at the headcount data, this is what we're seeing. So it has the department and it has for every department, it says month, you know, so October, November, you know, January, the, um, yeah, it's not sorted right, but you get the idea, right? So every month it reports that number. Uh, now, of course, department, is connected to this hierarchy, which we also have. Uh, so department can have uh, a leader, entity, division, something like that, right? So you can slice and dice it any which way you want. Uh, we're not that concerned about that table. We're mostly focused on this table. So again, let's take another look. So here we have, we have the department and you can see there are different departments here and uh, months, of course, different months here, right? So oops, didn't wanna do that. Okay, so let's go back and see how we can solve this. Uh, actually, before we go any further, make sure to download this file by going to learnpowerbi.com. You'll get our complete download treasure chest of all the files for all of our videos, including this one. So you can follow along, try out different things. All right, so we do not want this total headcount. So again, if you look, if you were to look at the formula right now in the headcount, it's just doing sum of headcount. Now, I'll say the sum is needed. You cannot get rid of the sum, and here's why, because I think this is what's called semi-additive. Uh, let me know, if guys, if I got that right. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it is semi-additive because you do wanna sum it up. So let's say if you were to look at a specific month, right? So let's say, uh, January 1, well, you do wanna add it up. So imagine if you were getting the total headcount, or and remember, we, we have another lookup table which groups department into a leader, entity, division. So if you're if you trying to, um, you know, kind of summarize it up, we do have to sum up these departments. So the sum is there, but then again, we just need to do a test and say, hey, you know what? If there are multiple months, you know, only show me the latest. So for that, let's create a new measure over here. We're gonna to go to modeling. And guys, I'm gonna take it step by step and I'm gonna make mistakes which uh, are intentional in this video. But of course, sometimes when I'm <laughs> writing something new, I, I do make mistakes unintentionally as well and that's the way to go. So if that happens to you, 
it's perfectly okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna say, I don't want the total headcount, I want the latest headcount. And for this, hold on. Okay, I wanted to make the font a little larger for you. So latest headcount. And I know that I'm gonna change the filter context here, right? So the, because the default filter context that's coming in is not good for me, right? Now, if you need more information about filter context, if you don't understand what that means, how that works, I would strongly encourage you to check out my course at learnpowerbi.com slash training. But I'm gonna assume you know that. So we don't do need to change the filter context. So we're gonna say calculate, that is a magic wand. That's usually the one that I use to change filter context. And, uh, but the first expression is, well, yeah, but before we go to the filter context, what are you actually calculating? And we still want the total headcount, which is summing up the headcount, but we only want it for the most recent month. Now, or the most recent date. So uh, I think this is what I tried when I started out, right? So I said, oh, that means the calendar date needs to be the max, right? So it needs to be the max calendar date. And uh, maybe that's a little too big. All right, so you get the idea. So it's saying, yep, calendar, give me total headcount where date is a max calendar date. And I think I need one more to close out the calculate. And that looks good for now, <laughs> promising, right? And then I'm gonna go here, add a comma here, because I know I'm gonna need that. And I'm gonna collapse that. And now let's, um, uh, let's, uh, let's actually give this guy some space. And I'm gonna add my measure here. So here, and I'm gonna add the latest headcount. Now notice that it does not work, right? So again, it's like, oh, why didn't it work? I mean, telling it to do the latest date. So there are lots of ways to debug formulas. One I like to do is um, you can use variables, but for now, I'm just gonna say, well, I'm trying to use this max calendar date value. What is that? So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna kind of return that for a second and I'm gonna comment out the original formula, right? So I'm gonna comment it out and and sometimes I'm, if I'm being careful, I do, I do not wanna, yeah, I don't wanna leave an indicator for me that, you know, this is not the real formula, I'm just debugging it. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, max date, okay, come on, buddy. Okay, there we go. So here, um, so let's see what's going on here and hopefully the formatting doesn't bother you. Maybe actually change the formatting a little bit, short date. Great, so again, we had written the formula as, oh, show me the headcount where calendar date is max calendar date. But now if we look here, what does the max calendar date return? And for 2020, it's returning 12-31-2020. That makes sense, right? And for this one, it's returning 12, 31, 2021. So that's the filter context. And of course, as you know, how filter context works is we're actually filtering the calendar table here, right? And that flows downhill through these filters. And again, if you don't get these concepts, I would encourage go through the course, learnpowerbi.com slash training. So, so I says filtering down. And now if you look at the headcount table, you would notice that it does have monthly grain of the data. How do I clear filter? Okay, right, so it does have a monthly grain of the data, but the way we have designated the month is by using the first of the month, right? So this is really not December 1, right? So again, the date doesn't apply, but in this case, the data set just has December 1, September 1. So of course, when you send that, send 1231, there's no data for that specific date. Now again, first thing I would say is that this doesn't mean that you do something hokey with your calendar table. Please, my friends, leave your calendar table as was as is. Calendar table needs to be at a, at a date level grain. Do not create a table with a month level grain. That is not a calendar table. You need a calendar table. If you wanna learn more, um, we'll put a link to the ultimate calendar playlist series. It's the most important table in your model. Don't mess it up. So we're not gonna mess it up. We're gonna let it be, right? Now, of course, if you come back here, so uh, if you come back to the place where we were trying to answer the question right here. So let's come back. And I did think about 
a few things. I said, great, max calendar date is giving me the end of the month. Now there is a DAX function start of month, which can be used. Now, of course, I also thought about, I can go into the query editor and actually shift the data set to, to, uh, for this data to have end of the month. Power Query has a function there too. Either of those would probably have been okay, but since we do have a pretty awesome calendar table, not just any calendar table, the ultimate calendar table, my friend, and again, we'll link to that uh, playlist below. So uh, what this calendar table has is, I'm gonna give you a demo, it has a lot of cool fields and one of them is this month year and especially month year num. So knowing that our data is at a monthly grain, I can just go back to the formula and I can say, you know what? I don't really want the maximum date. I just want the maximum month year or month really, right? But of course you don't wanna say December because December could be in 2020, 2021, 2022. So we're gonna change that. And actually just to show you what that is, I'm gonna uh, month year num, I'm just gonna show you what that returns. So when I say, give me the max month year num, there we go. So now you can see that it, it's, it now doesn't filter down to a specific date, it filters down to a specific month. So 2020 December, 2020, uh, 2021 December and so forth, right? So, uh, so this is gonna work because their data is at a monthly grain and now the specific date is not gonna matter. All right, so let's come back here and now we can uh, put it back in. So let's go to calculate. And, and I'm gonna put that on a new line. And we're saying not the specific date, I just care about the month year num. So that month year num needs to be the, the maximum, right? So give me the most recent month, give me the value for that. And I think I can take the debug stuff off. I'm pretty confident this is gonna work. So hit, mm, check, check that box. And let's take a look at it. Uh, do we have, oh, I thought I added commas. There we go. Okay, all right, so 2020, it's saying 1925. And I can scroll, uh, I can actually do this. I can just click on 2020 and I can see December is indeed 1925. I can of course also see it in the table over here. Uh, I can click 2020 and that looks good. So yeah, this is looking good. So I'm gonna just clean up the, the view a little bit, take, take off the red and be right back. All right, look at us, we are looking good. So again, for all of these graphs, I've switched out to the, uh, the latest headcount or new measure that we, had cre we have created. And you can see that it's, it's all looking good. So for 2020, we had kind of checked that and you can kind of see that. And of course here, we have uh, the year and the quarter. Now, of course, if we like, we can change that to, uh, to kind of the, uh, uh, to have it be drilled down. So year, quarter, maybe we can even add months in there. So I'm gonna go here and grab a month over there. And up, so you can see 2020 or 2022, we can see kind of the data and you can see it's Q1, 5823, that seems right. I can kind of validate it or 2022. Uh, 10, 9, 4, 4. Yeah, right, so everything just works. Of course, the department uh, works and so forth. And of course, you can do any other chart. So you can have a kind of a line like this and it's dummy data, so probably not that interesting. But, um, but yeah, you can see for each department how they compare year over year. Now folks, uh, again, a big thanks to Kerry Thomas for bringing this discussion up inside our learnpowerbi.com community. Uh, questions, uh, we love questions because it gives everybody an opportunity to learn and get better. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, make sure to go to learnpowerbi.com slash question. And yeah, I'll look forward to answering your question in the next video. All right, take care and power on.